Good morning, I'm Kinwani. And I'm Perkins. And on behalf of the Inspired family, we want to say welcome to Inspired Church. Whether you're joining us in person or online today, we want to thank you for joining us in our vision to reach, inspire, and elevate. But to maximize our worship experience and to minimize distractions on this magnificent morning, we encourage you to please silence your cell phones at this time. Let us take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you for the day that you have made for us to rejoice and to be glad. We come, O oh God, rejoicing to draw from the wells of salvation, knowing that you are going to do something on our behalf, transform our lives, and change our families. For that, we give you praise. We give you glory. Receive our praise. Receive our worship. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. By the way, Inspire Church today, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm reminded of that word in Romans said, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Listen, there are so many people that are living for God in professional sports, and we have got a small video to show you. Watch this video. God bless you. Football is what I do. It's not, you know, who I am. Um, who I am is who God calls me to be, and, and that's it. So Jesus Christ is, is my rock, is my Lord and Savior. That's who I live for, and that bleeds into, you know, how I love my teammates well, how, how I can have a good mindset, you know, when things are going well, when things aren't going well in football, in life. And my faith has helped me become a better person. It's helped me become a better leader, a better role model. Um, it's something that I live by every single day. Yeah, I mean, my faith is the most important thing in my life. It's the thing that keeps me grounded. Um, you know, I think the moment I start to, started to really, you know, enjoy my life more than I ever have is when I surrendered to God. And um, to me, it's, it's the thing that will always be consistent for me, no matter what happens in my life, good or bad. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed for that. Tell me what it means to you to have a relationship with Jesus, and how does that apply to your life? Uh, it means everything, man. I would not be here without him. I've been through many trials and tribulations, just like anybody has, and just to be able to lean on him and to be able to go to him and in quiet and in, in my quiet time and be able to build my relationship with him is, is everything to me. I'm, I'm a faith-driven man. I believe in in. Uh, and faith being so important in so many different ways, not just on the football field, but in life in general. Good morning, Inspired Church. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet all over the house. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you, God, that you are here. And we celebrate you today because you are good and your mercy endure forever. And your truth endures to all generations. So, Father, this morning, let heaven come. Let your will be done on earth, in this room, as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. Let no life in this room leave untouched by your presence. Father, we receive you this morning, and we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing today. We call your name this morning. Give God a shout of praise.
poder en tu nombre There is power in the name of Jesus hey. Power in your name There is power, there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus Sing that real bitch, hey.
Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Sing it with me. Your name, say. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Say, your name What do you need him to do for you? Break every stronghold. Break it. Every Sing. Shine. Oh, burn like a fire. Lift up your hands in this room. Speak Jesus over every single one of you. We speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over.
The name of the Lord is our strong tower, amen. Devils have to flee at that name. At the mention of his name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Those on the earth, under the earth, above the earth, every knee, amen, at the name of Jesus. Let's go directly before his throne of grace for a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. King Jesus, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your blood that covers us, that washes us of all our sin. God, that no matter what we walked in here with, no matter what we've done, God, we thank you that your blood washes us through and through. That because of your blood, we have clean hands and a pure heart. That because of your blood, you make us righteous. It says your blood is able to present us to you holy and blameless. God, it's only by the blood. God, it's by your blood. It says that you washed us and freed us from our own sin. It's by your blood that we're delivered and redeemed from every curse of the wicked one. God, it's by your blood. It says there is life in the blood. God, it's, it's in your blood that we live, we move and have our being. God, it's our blood that we have victory over the wicked one. It says by your blood, we overcome the devil. It's by the blood of the lamb that we stand with a praise on our lips this morning. We're still singing praise about the blood that was poured out 2,000 years ago. It still hasn't lost its power. It still hasn't lost its significance, the relevance of the blood. It's still speaking this morning. It's speaking over everybody on that screen. It's speaking over every family dealing with sickness and addiction. It's speaking over your family this morning. It's speaking healing. It's speaking wholeness. It's speaking restoration, redemption, newness, salvation. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the blood. And God, we thank you that you're doing a new thing this morning. You're doing a new thing. The lame are getting ready to leap. The blind are getting ready to see. Diabetes has to go. Cancer has to flee. Cancer has to go at the name of Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Let's lift up a praise to the Lord. I feel his presence, God is good. Hallelujah, you may be seated. God is moving in our midst this morning. If you're with us here for the very first time, whether in person, or online, we welcome you to Inspire Church. It's always a blessing to worship the Lord with you here at Inspire. If that's you, you're here for the, for the very first time, you'll see a QR code and a phone number appear on your screen. And if you were to simply text 
the word guest to that phone number or scan that QR code, you'll receive a link to your device on how to remain connected with us and receive regular updates on what we're doing here at Inspire. So please do one of those two things if you're with us for the first time. Also, we always like to honor those that are in attendance that are running for public office. And today, this morning, we have with us Danny Norris right here. If he could stand, let's put our hands together for him. Amen. Danny Norris is running for the House of Representatives here in the state of Texas, specifically District 142. He's an attorney, a, a former law school administrator. In fact, at the law school I attended and while I was there, and not only that, he's also a public official. We thank the Lord for him and what he's doing in the community. One more time, let's put our hands together for him. Amen. This is also the time in our service where we honor God with our giving. So you'll see the ushers making their way through the congregation and they have with them the offering and the tithe envelopes. If you need one, let them know with an uplifted hand, they'll distribute one to you. However, if you're not giving in person, we do have five ways to give here at Inspire. So choo please choose the method and manner of giving that's most convenient for you. I just have a few announcements for you as you're preparing your gifts. First is this, this coming Wednesday from 7 to 7.30 p.m., the Awana, the Awana program, a part of our children's ministry here at Inspire, they're gonna be using some of the hallways to ride their boxcars through. And so as you're entering, you might see them in the hallways. Please do not be alarmed. It's not gonna disrupt service. We just don't want you to be shocked when you see them in the hallways. It's our children's ministry. They're always having loads of fun. Second is this. Next Sunday, is our, is, we'll be having communion at every, every morning service, even in our Spanish service. That's February the 18th. Next Sunday, please prepare your hearts for that. Thirdly, our singles ministry is launching, and we're very excited about this. This is a community for ages 30 and up, a place for single adults, career aged and up, to connect with like-minded followers of Christ. Please join us on Friday, February the 23rd at, in, at the Inspire Cafe right out in the lobby for an evening of fellowship as we share our community mission and vision. Connect, grow, and serve. You'll meet some new faces, enjoy some refreshments, and have a ton of fun. Again, that's gonna be at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. right out in the lobby. Then we're gonna have our encounter weekend on February the 25th. That's not the next Sunday, but the very next. It's gonna be awesome. All our morning services will have Prophet Lloyd Bustard with us. Amen. If you have been here for a Prophet Lloyd Bustard service, you know it is powerful, it's electric, you don't wanna miss it. Please get here early, it's gonna be packed out. Again, it's gonna be on all our morning services on February the 25th. And then we'll have an evening worship encounter service at 6 p.m. Please come out, it's gonna be awesome. And then finally, we have our Serve With Us campaign initiative. We want everyone to be used of God and your abilities, talents, gifts. So please scan the QR code and get involved. We would love to serve with you and whatever God is calling you to do. I wanna pray over your offering this morning. God, we thank you that you are a provider, God. You're with us, not only in our, the spiritual aspect of our life, but even financially, God, you're for us. And God, if you be for us, who can be against us? That even this area, Lord, your glory will shine through. Your goodness will be made known in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you as you give. temple you are the voice 
We are the soul. You are our God. We are your people. You are the light. We stand in awe. We stand in
this is more. This is more. And this is more. Let's declare his word today. Because mm. mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being loose. There it is. Because God, we believe. And yes, we can see that wonders are still worth you. And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. Because God, we believe. It. And yes, we can see. prayer this morning. Lift up your hands all over the world. Moves of God don't happen just by circumstance or by chance. They happen when hunger fills the room. God meets the need, but he can't meet a need that you don't open up your mouth and declare. He can't move on behalf of something that you don't open up about. So right here, right now, just begin to open up and give God that need. We're here for you, Jesus. So don't you tell me he can't do it. Stay right there, just a few more seconds. from you yeah we need to move one touch from you will change everything we need to move one touch from you yeah Cause this is revival, this is our breakthrough, this is where death comes.
to life This is the moment Here in your presence This is revival yeah. This is revival This is our breakthrough This is where death comes to life This is a moment Here in your presence This is revival Cause Yahweh Rafa Elohim it's your turn I feel like it's your moment to there it is I feel like it's your turn I don't feel like this is a moment for a song I feel like this is a moment for a press so right here where you are if you if you have a heavenly language pray at it if you don't have a heavenly language and you want one pray at it if you don't have a heavenly language just begin to pray. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that means remove your agenda, i.e. sapatea, and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then the scripture says, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. I don't know about you, but we need a land healed. I feel healing. I feel a need for healing in the room. So I dare you right here. Lift up your voice here in this room. Share my take up my say. Father, for every name that had cancer, for every name that was sick, for every family that's grieving, pray right here. We lift up shops of worship. Shapiatakea. We got to do more than just church. This is your moment. Unfold your arms and lift them up to the Father. I'm talking all over the room. From the band to the sound, to the sound engineers. Stop what you're doing and look at the Father. Recognize when he walks into the room. You want revival? Prepare the way. Yeah. Prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way. 
your name. Praise God. Praise God. It looked like you were hesitating, like you weren't sure if you were done. And man, you know how I am. 
swing for the fences every time. God can do more in minutes than I can do in hours. And when his people are in his presence, amazing things happen. Give God some praise one more time. Hallelujah. We bless your name. And good morning, Inspire. How are you? How are you? Well, I know that you're going to, and you're welcome to stay up front if you feel like standing or being seated there that long, but you might want to make your way back to your places. And I want to welcome everyone who is here. Uh, I'm excited. There have been two announcements that have been made today that I, I want to underline myself, and that is a new singles ministry for ages 30 and above. I'm really glad we're doing that. Amen. And I see the response. You are too. Uh, Todd Hull and Dr. MJ, thank you for having the burden and passion for that. And then I'm really also excited. In addition to that, I'm just really passionate too about the upcoming Encounter Weekend. And Lloyd Busted, Bustard, uh, Prophet Lloyd Bustard will be here with us that, that Sunday morning. And what you just saw a moment ago, uh, I asked you, was it Sunday a week ago? How many of you would like to just come back on a Sunday evening and do nothing but that? And the response was incredible. So Lloyd Bustard on Sunday morning, the 25th, I believe it is, of February, February. You correct me if that is not right uh, because I didn't get to write that down. And, um, and that evening at six o'clock, we come back for a worship encounter. So if I can phrase it like this, get a word that morning about what God is going to do, take possession of it that evening in worship. Amen. And we're really pleased to have with us here today Mr. Danielle Norris, who is running for representative of Texas, that's also been mentioned. House Dis District 142, would you please stand? There he is, amen. And as a matter of protocol, because I, I need to mention this, uh, Mr. Norris, we kind of come from a different kind of background and, and some types of churches don't ever want you to mention politics, period, but we always introduce our candidates who are campaigning. And there's a reason for that, is because it, you don't really have the right to complain if you didn't even go vote. Amen. Testing mic, one, two. Is this on back there? Just check it. And so March 5th is election, and early voting, I think, is the 20th. And so you research the candidates, and, and uh, I, I, we have people from all sides of the political spectrum that come, and if they are here, I, I do the same thing I would, and I, just so you'll know, because sometimes I have to remind folk about this, we don't take a position here regarding that. Hadn't you lost enough friends fighting over all that stuff already? Did you not learn anything last Christmas and Thanksgiving? when you brought all that up at the dinner table, or they did. So if Mr. and President Joe Biden were to walk in and President, ex-President Donald Trump were to walk in, you would expect me to acknowledge the presence of both of them because of their office. And I think of Paul, who in the book of Acts stood before Festus and before Felix, and his address to them both was most noble. That's what he called them, the honorific he gave them. We honor people, we honor the office, and we honor everybody. And so in all, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, that, that's a fundamental right of America. Amen. But in the house, we worship God. Amen. Amen. So uh, just, uh, need to make sure everyone 
uh, understands that as we go into a new election cycle and season. And others may drop by and we honor you for coming. We always want to welcome everybody that comes by. And I want to get right into the Word of God. We're in a series about how to change your season. And the theme for this year is ready for it. Is there anybody ready for what God has in store for you? That seemed to be pretty tepid to me. Anybody really ready for God to unfold your destiny and unpackage it? Praise God. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. But the series that we're in about you can change your season or how to change your season simply is meant to inform you that you don't have to be stuck in life in one place the rest of your life and then wait and wait hoping something will come along that will cause that to change. You are not at the mercy of fate or circumstances. Many people believe they are. Victimization is a doctrine that seems to be heard, pushed quite a bit in this, in, in the times in which we live. Everybody uh, finds a certain amount of self-comfort in identifying in some measure with being a victim. But what anybody will tell you is that if that is the identity you choose to embrace, it pretty much seals your fate. You're not a victim, you're a victor. You say, well, how can you say I'm not a victim and somebody did wrong to me? Well, they did wrong. And in that sense, yes, you were treated very badly, but I'm not gonna carry the label the rest of my life that I was rejected by my mama at the age of four, which was my experience. I'm not gonna carry that all my life. I'm not gonna carry the experiences that went against me all of my life. And you can shift your season and you need to do that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna carry the fact all of my life that I'm the product of a broken home or that I was raised by my grandmother and therefore I am in any way limited by that. No, the devil meant it unto me for evil, but God meant it unto me for good. Last week I talked about how you can change your season by turning weakness into strength. And to be able to turn weakness into strength requires that we have the capacity and the courage to identify our weaknesses first of all, and then that we possess the desire and the will to be able to overcome them. And discerning or self-assessing our weaknesses is hugely important in this process. And there's a reason for that. How many of you have lived long enough to watch that if things are weak at a certain point, if they're going to break, that's probably where they're going to break, right? There's even a management theory that is called the theory of constraints. Some of you probably have studied it that states the success of any system, any process, machinery, company, conveyor line, uh, person, marriage, it's always limited to the strength of the weakest component. And the way it works is like this. If you fasten a rope together with an iron chain and then you fasten the other end of the iron chain, I'm talking about large iron chain, fasten the other end to a large steel cable and you try to pick up a heavy weight, where is that contraption probably going to break. The weakest component will be the rope. And so therefore you define the strength of that whole unit on the basis of the fact that its weakest component is only rated at so much. And therefore to increase the lifting capacity of what has been designed, you're gonna have to replace the rope with something else or find a stronger rope. And thankfully, God is all about empowering us in our weaknesses. How many of you lived long enough to know that you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you're grateful? Can I hear an amen? Yes. 
in our text today, there is a man who had a weakness. Mark chapter three, verse one through six. And he, Jesus, entered the synagogue again. That's his house. And a man was there who had a withered hand. So they, the they here are the Pharisees, watched him closely, whether he would heal him, the man with the withered hand, on the Sabbath, hmm. so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to him, is it lawful on the Sabbath, to them rather, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their heart, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him, Christ, that they might destroy him. Father, would you speak a word to us today in that insightful, knowing way that you have of identifying where we are and what we need to hear. And then through the anointing of your word, help me to hide behind the cross for the next few minutes while you speak to us and inform us of the truths that can transform our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted and said, Amen. I want to speak to you from this subject this morning. Stretch. Jesus said, stretch out your hand. This man that had a withered hand was dealing with an obvious physical weakness in his life. He was limited in his ability to receive because he could not grasp or hold on to things the way that you and I can. And his problem was further exacerbated by the fact that he was surrounded by people who never challenged him to move beyond those limitations. And that's often the case with us. We're unable to shift out of our circumstance, not because God doesn't want us to, he does, but because we're encouraged in our weakness to remain where we were. There is often a thin line between embracing people and loving them enough to challenge them. We live in a world that seems to believe that if you challenge anybody, you're rejecting their worth or their value at that moment. That's not true because if I love my kids, I want to challenge them. If you love me, you'll challenge me and help me be better. You've often heard me say, compliments are great, thank you, I appreciate that, but if you wanna know the truth, all it does is identify what I'm already doing well. And while I'm grateful, you wanna really help me? Point out an area that I can improve in, and not with some bad attitude, where you're just casting stones, but identify a way for me to move forward, and help me see that in love, I will owe you a debt because you've improved my product. And that in turn helps me to be a better pastor. And so I don't resent that. I welcome that. There are those that don't want you to climb above your situation. And Jesus was angry with the Pharisees because that was their heart. They did not help this man achieve the full measure of freedom and strength that he was supposed to obtain, that was destined to him by God. Christ didn't come to violate the will of the Father. If Jesus healed him, it, it meant that that was always God's plan for this man's future in life. I was raised, and you've heard me say this, I think the last time I mentioned it was at the old location, so many of you folk here might not have heard that, but I was raised in southwest Louisiana, and my dad we just didn't go out and buy shrimp and fish and crawfish and crabs. We had to go catch our own. If I told my dad, let's go buy some fish to fry, he would have looked at me like, boy, what's the matter with you? And we would go crabbing. And you know what you'd do if you go crabbing? You get a big number three wash tub. Some of y'all don't even know what that is. And you'd get some string and you'd go to the butcher and get some chicken necks. Anybody remember this? And you'd go to the bayou and you'd tie the string around the chicken neck 
and throw it in those coffee colored waters. And the next thing you know, that line start moving sideways. You knew you had one on, right? So you slowly end over end, pull it in, scoop the net underneath it. And that crab is so greedy, even though there's a net getting ready to haul him in, he's not going to let go. And you scoop him up and drop him in that number three wash tub. And we never put a lid over that. And I'll never forget one day, we were down in uh, south of Hackberry, Louisiana in Cameron Parish. And we had been catching crabs. And I turned to my dad. They kept trying to come up out of there. And I said, Dad, we better put something on that. They're going to get out. He said, you don't need to worry about that. They're not going to get out. And I said, well, look at them. They're sure trying. He said, watch a minute longer. And sure enough, when one was almost out, another one reach up and grab him and pull him back down. It sounds like some folk that I know and that you know that are in our lives. As long as you're not doing well, they're willing to commiserate with you. But the first time you try to climb out of your situation, who do you think you are? They're pulling you right back down. You ain't all that. They point out your weaknesses. Jesus got angry with the Pharisees because they would not allow this man to move forward. And he challenged the man with a withered hand. And he said, you have to stretch if you're going to get beyond your present limitations. And he dared to tell the man that, stretch. These days, it seems like some folk don't want to be told that. I'm good. I'm the way I am. Who are you telling me to stretch? What, well, what's going on with that? God has some things in life for you that you will never reach just by accepting current limitations. You're not hearing me. If you don't stretch, you won't obtain them. Amen. And I want you to know something that he's designed a miracle just for you, but you might have to stretch to be able to get it. He has a destiny waiting for you, a future. I don't know what's going on, sorry about that. Amen. And he wants you to stretch. And so we're talking about how to change your season. And I want you to realize that in order to get what God has in store for you, you're going to need to put forth effort. It's going to require you to stretch your mental ability. It's going to require you to stretch your faith. It will require you to stretch in terms of skill. Educationally, you might have to go back to school to be everything God wants you to be. Am I talking to anybody right now? How many of you know that relationships will stretch you? You're not gonna make a marriage work if you're not willing to be stretched, I can promise you that. I'm preaching, by the way, better than you're responding right now. I just thought I'd put a little asterisk right there. The importance of this principle is underscored or noted in how many times the man's story is told in the New Testament. You have four gospels, three of them are the synoptic gospels, which means they tell the same stories from different perspectives. The perspectives of three different men. John's gospel stands unique in that it describes an aspect of who Jesus is that the others kind of, they don't really get to. And so you will commonly find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, them telling stories and one told by Matthew might be repeated by Luke or it might be repeated by Mark. But when you find that it's in the, the canon of scripture, the same story is recorded three times. It's like the Lord is saying, are you paying attention to this? It's kind of like what we do in communication to emphasize the importance of something we will say, hey, you listening? And we'll repeat it again. Hey, you listening? Jesus would do that. He would say, verily, verily. Anytime he used those words, or surely, surely, it means sit up, pay attention. I've got something to tell you that you need to hear. And the fact 
that this story is repeated in all three of the synoptic gospels is significant in that it indicates there is a divine principle of life that the Lord wants us to understand. Before I really unpack it, I want you to notice the first thing Jesus did. He told the man full well knowing that the man was surrounded by people that wanted to pull him back down. He looked at the man and said, step forward. I need somebody to say that. Step. Step where? Step where? Go around the problem? No. Back up? No. Step forward. To step forward meant that Jesus was directing him, you need to come closer to me than where you are standing where you're at right now. Mm. Because breakthroughs and miracles happen in the presence of God. That was worth the price of admission right there. Because I can promise you, in this broken world we live in, sooner or later, you're going to need help from above. And you don't want to be standing outside saying, hey, you in the house. Uh Uh-uh. Step forward. Get where he is at. Because when you're in his presence, amazing things take place. I just received this text. Brian Dockstader is here. Brian, just stand if you would, right over here. Double lung transplant recipient at the end of his life. Until then, doing amazing and strong, getting his whole family saved. He's one of the best personal evangelists you'll ever meet. He sent me a text. And his brother, Carl, and Carl's wife, Sharon, live in New York. And they watch the services with a group of people in their home. Hey, y'all, do y'all know we have a branch in New York? Amen. And Sharon sent this message, and Brian forwarded to me. Please put Becky on the prayer list at Inspire and have folks pray. Her oncologist is doing a biopsy next week. We need a miracle And I'm believing for one, but need support. If the biopsy comes back positive, it means stage four cancer. In Jesus' name, praying for a negative result. Thank you. Next text. The next day. Hmm. I have no words. I just received this from Becky's husband. She was going to the doctor that day. I don't understand what just happened. I sent you a report. Apparently the oncology team met and went over those results I sent you and they said, no cancer. Give God some praise because I rejoice with every one of you that receive a victory like that. I give God praise for every breakthrough you get in your life. He is the God of breakthrough. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They will monitor the spots on her spine, but no biopsy. Yesterday, they said biopsy. Today, none. Yesterday, looks like stage four. Today, nope. You know why? Between yesterday and today, somebody prayed and got in the presence of God. When you get in the presence of God, amazing things can happen. Somebody ought to take a praise break right now. If you've got a reason to praise him in your life, give it up to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said step forward. And that means he needed to step away from the wrong influences. And that's the problem with some of us. We've got the wrong voices around us. You gotta leave the negativity. You gotta leave that group that says can't do it. Settle where you're at. You gotta leave that bunch that wants to pull you down to their level. 
You know what they say anyway. All you have to do is get successful and they're gonna start like, wonder where they're going to church now on Sunday. Hey, Mabel, let's park outside their house. Stoop down so they can't see us and we're gonna follow them and see where they're going and getting all of this. Don't get too close. They'll look in the rear view mirror and see it's us. People ought to see something in you that draws them to your God. Hallelujah. Step forward. You step forward, meaning you leave the past. All of us have one. How many of you have ever had anything bad go wrong in your life? That was only a few of you. The rest of you, I'll be out in the lobby at the end of the service. I would really like to shake your hand and ask, am I standing in the wrong place or something? Because the lightning, it, it keeps striking me. I have situations. As you know, I've been rear-ended eight times in automobile accidents. I've lost track. Jerry, you may remember, is it 33 or 34 surgeries? I honestly don't even remember it anymore. Fusions, laminectomies. I've got, I got all kinds of spinal fusions, disectomies, knee replaced because it slammed into the dashboard of a car and on and on and on. I learned more about medicine than I ever intended to know going into ministry. And it's been because of what I've been through. <laughs> Amen. And notice I said I was rear-ended eight times. I'm driving careful. <laughs> and if y'all see me and it looks like me and the car is not being driven carefully, probably not me, it just looks like my car. <laughs> but here's how people drive these days. You know what's gonna happen if you do that? You're gonna run into me if you hadn't already. <laughs> you can't move into your future looking over your shoulder at your past. <laughs> Step forward. I need somebody to say I'm stepping forward. Who am I preaching to right now? Who am I talking to in this house? You need to take a step toward God. Amen. And I'm just about done. You see the woman with the issue of blood. She had to stretch through the crowd. Stretching is a part of being a child of God. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14, and I don't have time to read it. The apostle Paul talks about how he pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But the first thing he said I do is I forget those things which are behind. That's the problem with some of us. I wanna ask you a sincere question. How long are you gonna let the past rob you of your future? You say, I was unkind. No, I'm nudging you, I'm saying stretch. I know it's hard to, to forget the wounds and the scars. Man, I got him. I look like, I look like I've been <laughs> run over by a freight train if you see all my scars. But that's not where I choose to live. That was yesterday. Today's a new day. Tomorrow there's a new promise. My God is sufficient for every need that I will encounter. You say, how are you still going on by the grace of God? That's how you're still going on by the grace of God. Oh, Lord. And it reminds me of the old James Cleveland song. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. No, he didn't. Stretch yourself. If God gives you a vision, you're going to have to stretch yourself to see it become a reality. Now, I'm not talking about getting all worked up in the flesh either. I'm talking about you're gonna to have to stretch your faith. But there was another message and I'm really about done. There was another message in this story too. 
And one of those was for the Pharisees. Because in God's house, the very people that ought to have been helping that man were the ones standing in his way. Hmm. How many churches have you been in where the crabs that won't let you climb to the top are actually sitting on the pew right behind you? Don't turn around and look. Amen. The Pharisees were locked into shallow, self-limiting, go nowhere, never grow, and self-restricting thinking that was hurting their ability to be used by God as well. And unfortunately, they got carried away in that line of thinking. We need to stretch our thinking. Now, I want you to look at the person next to you and point your finger at your own chest and say, I need to stretch my thinking. Stretch. Stretch. Stretch your thinking. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thinking. And so, as I finish up today, you say, but, but pastor, you've kind of come on strong about the folk around you. Yeah, you have to be intentional and careful. Why? I'll give you four reasons and then I'll throw in a fifth. First of all, those around you influence your thoughts. Secondly, those around you influence your emotions. Fourthly, those around you influence your attitude. And fourthly, those around you influence your decisions. You just watch it. You start hanging around people with the wrong attitude, your attitude goes south. They're always talking negatives. Next thing you know, you're thinking is turned upside down. Look, all four of those then produce another result, and this is the fifth outcome of hanging around people that are content to let you stay within your limitations. And the fifth thing they will do is they determine your outcomes. Don't you give up to your future. Your fu don't give up your future, I mean to say. By allowing people to abort your destiny. Sometimes, oh boy, here goes. Fasten your seat belt. <clears throat> Settle in your seat because I'm going to say it. Sometimes you got to give somebody the wave. And I'm not talking about the wave at the Super Bowl. I mean like, see ya. Amen. I'm talking as somebody who almost lost his life as a teenager because of the influence of the wrong voices. You've got to change the way you relate to people, but you might have to change the people you relate to. Mm. Stop hanging around people who encourage your weakness. Stop hanging around people who the two of you struggle in the same area. So you know what you're gonna to tend to do to each other? Pull each other down. You need somebody to give you a hand up, not pull you down. Hallelujah. A sure formula for disaster is to surround yourselves with people who have the same weaknesses as you do. Sure formula for failure. And you know yet, those are the people we're the most often attracted to. Why? Because they don't stretch us. And stretching is uncomfortable. See all these athletes, uh, stretch. You know, all that. No, just uh, get out of my way. I'm going straight to the gym machine. And then you pull a tendon because you didn't stretch. That was the mistake King Ahab made, and I really am done. 
He said, First of all, he had a weakness and his weakness was in his spirituality. But you know what he did? Rather than trying to become strong, he married somebody that was weaker than he was. Jezebel. Talk about two people that were not good for each other. And then they surrounded themselves with prophets. And one day King Jehoshaphat, good King Jehoshaphat from Judah came over to visit him and they were trying to, to be at peace with one another so Israel and Judah would not war with each other and Jehoshaphat comes over and, and Ahab says, you know, there are these people that have taken our land away. Would you go up and fight with me? And all of those 400 prophets ran up and say, amen, God's in it. Go fight. Hallelujah, you will surely win. And Jehoshaphat listened and said, is there not a prophet of the Lord here besides that tells me that not only did Ahab staff to his weakness rather than his strength, he surrounded himself with people that would not encourage him to turn weakness into strength. And Jehoshaphat said, I'm not going anywhere with you until I hear a word from God. Amen. Take the keys back from whoever's driving your life for you. Say, so I'm in charge from here on out, me and God. Don't let everybody make your decisions for you. And I'm done, I really am. So let me just mention these things, and I'm closing, that can change your season. Number one, change your season by connecting to God. If you don't know him, get to. Number two, be willing to stretch. Stretch. Don't like it. The message, the word of God, my devotional life, my time reading the Bible, going to church and making a commitment to be there every service I can stretches me. Honoring God in my giving, my tithe, that stretches me. You'll always have a withered hand if you don't stretch. Number three, change your season by growing relationships that stretch you but in the right direction. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And then change your season by developing a devotional life that stretches and grows the relationship that you've begun with God. Don't be one of those Christians that's, I've been in the way 40 years. Yeah, you've been in the way 40 years. Y'all go figure out what that means. Amen. I'm not talking about the way of the cross either. I've been, I've been, I've been serving God 40, I got 40 years experience serving God. Some people say that and they've only got one year of experience 40 times over because they're not growing. Grow, stretch your relationship with God. Stretch, painful, painful. Every once in a while some, when somebody asks you, what are you doing, you ought to say, well, right now I'm being stretched. <laughs> and who is in the building is being stretched right now? Oh, wow. Did I help you? Stand with me across the building. Every head is bowed. Eyes are closed. I want to see the hands of those who'd slip up their hands. And you need to start at the very first point by developing a relationship with God, giving your heart to the Lord. And you will say, I need Christ in my life. Raise your hand right where you are, all over the building. All over the building. Hands going, keep, keep raising them. I need Christ. Oh my heavens, look at how many. I want to pray for you. Those of you at home, pray for you. And by the way, let me say that anything that I said a while ago, 
is never meant to be so direct that it is harmful. I just am trying to point out the absurdity of us believing that we can move into our destiny and just remain the same. And so, Father, I pray for every person that has raised their hand. I pray that, Lord, you would come into their heart. We surrender our lives. We repent of our sins. We invite you to be our Savior. We believe in the efficaciousness of the blood of Jesus Christ. And ask for your guidance. And we willingly surrender the throne that self has been sitting on, self-will, flesh, and we invite you to be the Lord. Open up ye gates, be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. King of glory, we invite you to come in. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouted and said amen. Let's welcome everybody that just prayed that prayer with us. Come on, I want to have a party for a moment. Can I hear somebody rejoice with the angels of heaven? Wow, what an amazing service and what a life-changing word. All you have to do is stretch, stretch your faith and see what God is going to do. Just straight, stretch your faith, your trust in God and you're going to see God do great and amazing things for you. Well, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. And we believe that you have received a word from God. If you act upon this word, your life will never be the same. Just in case there's somebody on this stream who has given his life to Jesus or her life to Jesus, I want to congratulate you and I want to say welcome to the family. We don't want you to walk through this journey by yourself. We want to be a part of what God is doing in your life. All you have to do is just text the word salvation to this number 713-360-1575 or you can just scan the QR code that is being displayed. You can also send the word prayer if you want to be prayed for or you want to be baptized. Just text the word baptism and one of our team members will get in touch with you to make sure that we get that done for you. It is an awesome journey you're just embarking on and we know that God is going to bless you richly. We also have a daily devotion that is available every day by text. All you have to do is just text the word JOIN to 713-360-1575 and you'll be enrolled into our daily text devotional which comes out every morning at about 8 o'clock thereabouts and you'll be receiving a word of encouragement from our pastor. A song that we are worshiping together, it's going to be a blessing to your life. And we just want to take this moment just to pray for you before you go. Father, we thank you for your sons and your daughters that are hearing our voices. We thank you for the things you are doing in their lives. And we believe that the best of their days are up ahead and you have been preparing them for it. And we know that God, you are going to perform the word that you have promised for their lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, there's one more service to go. Our Spanish-speaking service is going to take place at 2 o'clock p.m. this afternoon. If you haven't been able to make it to church, you still have time. God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. Goodbye and be inspired.